Today's message is brought to you by the partners and friends of Anthony Trice Ministries. And I ain't saying that it changes overnight because it doesn't. A lot of my issues didn't change overnight. But I stayed, I stuck with it. I kept doing it, and that thing had to change because it may be a fact that you're sick or you broke or you ignorant, but facts are subject to change. That's what faith is about. I'm going to trust God because this ain't normal. I'm going to trust God because this ain't what he told me. That thing has to change because the Bible says nothing can exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And I happen to believe that come hell or high water, I'm going to stand on the word. I shall not be moved. Afraid, but I ain't going to move. Uncomfortable, but I ain't going to move. Sad. A little depressed at times, discouraged discourage at times, but I'm 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 my feet shall be planted by the rivers of water. Because I understand what's at stake. My soul is at stake. And some of us ain't trying to take your it's controlling you. The thing about it, you ignorant to the fact of the demons that's in your family line. Amen. Is that it? Read. But though we or an angel from heaven, Paul said, if I come or an angel come out of heaven, preach any other gospel, preaching something that contradicts the Bible. Uh huh. Read. Let them go to hell. That's some deep stuff. So, so, so you can't, I don't care how gifted somebody is, they can still be the devil. Because we mesmerize that people's gifts and they title. That don't mean that the devil got some fuck with some titles. The devil can quote the scripture, he just can't live it. But a lot of us don't know that. We don't understand that. It ain't about nobody. Listen. You shouldn't be chasing signs, wonders, and miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles should be chasing you. Amen. Don't get caught up in folks' gifts. And, and I have to say this because we twist this too. Don't get caught up in people's title. They don't mean you disrespect them either. Because we will uh, see you. Dis- no, you can't disrespect God's men because it messes up your, your conscience. That's why folks crazy. If you read the Bible, you'll know what I'm saying is true. People conscience is serious because they disrespect authority. I ain't say they was right. They could be wrong. And you still got to respect authority. Police officers, every police officer ain't a crook. But we, we put everybody in the same bundle. Every lawyer ain't a crook. Every doctor ain't a crook. Every preacher ain't a crook. And if you think everybody a crook, that means something wrong with your mind. And if there is a crook, you still got to respect him. Ask David. Saul had backslid, and God had rejected Saul, and David was getting ready to cut his skirt, and God said, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. I don't care if you don't like preachers. They still men and women of God, and if you don't respect them, it'll mess you up in your head. That's why the preachers that I was up under, I kept my mouth off of them. I followed them as they followed Christ. Because if you can do it better, why don't you get up here and do it? You can't even lead your house. You can't lead three people, let alone 300. How your child running you? Running your house. Have no responsibility. They come and go when they get ready at 10. And you up in here in somebody else's face and I tell them, so sit down. Sit your hips down. Amen. I'm, I'm going to tell you how to get people delivered. 
When you know people acting out of character and acting crazy, you got to bust them out right there, at, right there, in love. You, okay. Uh, what about your husband that got three women? Have you said something to him? Did you up in my face? Get out of my face. I'm sorry, I'm too raw for some of y'all. But that's why the church is so messed up, because nobody would stare poke the truth. We lying to folk. You can't get your stuff off on me. I stop you right there and say, uh, excuse me. <laughs> your problem is you let people walk up one side, you down the other, because you're passive and you're weak. Weak leader, weak, weak Christian. Read. Is that it? Now, I really want to get to this right here. This is my point right here. Read. Uh huh. So if somebody's preaching the gospel and Jesus Christ is not the center of it, it's a false gospel. There's thousands on thousands of religions out here. Mary ain't the mediator. Jesus is. I ain't praying to Mary. The bees are Mary. The devil is alive. Read. Right, now this is what I want to get to right here. Read. Now, verse 10. For you are now persuaded men. Uh-huh. Or, you are now persuaded men or God. Or you are a man pleaser. When you are a man pleaser, you're not a God pleaser. And, and half the folk are trying to please people and not God because you're afraid of them because they threaten you. You got one time to threaten me. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, one time threaten me. Excuse me? Well, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, some of y'all are weak. You just let people do anything to you and say anything to you, and you know your child manipulating you. You already know that. So why are you letting them? Ooh, this is a hard gospel here, boy. You know your husband manipulating you. You know your wife, why are you just going along with them instead of standing up and saying, no, not in here today. That's why they can't get delivered, because you're afraid of them. Jesus said, Peter, Peter, what you saying come from a man. Get thee behind me, Satan. He busted Peter out right there in love. You're afraid of people. The Bible says, don't fear him that can kill the body, but fear him that can kill both body and soul in hell. We fear people more than we fear God. God can send your bad butt to hell, but you're afraid somebody taking your life. That, that, that ain't nothing. Where are you going to go after they take your life? That's what you need to be afraid of. And, and when I say afraid, fear means reverence. People don't fear God. They don't respect God. Read. Uh, Pete Paul said, he writes to the Galatians, if, I ple if I'm a man pleaser, uh-huh. I should not be the servant. Wow. You ain't serving God and you pleasing people? Because anytime you pleasing people, you're not pleasing God. And anytime you please God, you certainly ain't pleasing people. And you want everybody to like you. Everybody ain't going to like you. Some Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Folk will fall out with you. Folks will get mad at you when you tell them that they ain't right. And the reason why you won't call it out because you try to be everybody's friend. Jesus, I can't bring a sword. I can't bring some division. If your mama ain't going and I'm trying to take you, then you need to separate from your mama. If your children ain't going and I'm trying to take you, then guess what? You got to separate from your children. So be it. But we, we want everybody to like us because we insecure and got low self-esteem and we don't know who we are and don't realize we are keeping company with the devil. Jesus, they said, Jesus, your mama out here. He said, who is my mama? I said, who's my mama? 
He said, they that do the will of my father is my brother and my sister. I'm hitting hard. I'm hitting hard. You know why? Because we need to be delivered. Because we are stuck and we're not moving forward because we won't deal with these demons that's in our lives. Let me tell you something. Don't worry about nobody else because you got enough demons of your own. I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, you know what? We, our problem is we're in other people's business. Amen. You need to stay out of other people's business because you need to sweep around your own front door. How you worrying about somebody else and your life jacked up from the floor up? I ain't gave my title yet. Read that, and I'll, we move to the next one. But I certify you, brethren, uh-huh. that the doctrine which was preached to you is not after me. This ain't no man doctrine. This ain't come from no man. This come from the Holy Ghost. Amen. Man got their own doctrine. Amen. Read. I did Paul said what I got. I didn't get it from no man. Read. Neither was I taught it. My God. The Holy Ghost revealed this to me. And a lot of our problems, we don't have a revelation about healing. We don't have a revelation of who we are. We don't have a revelation of prosperity. We don't have a revelation of how marriage should be. We don't have a revelation of parenting. We don't have a revelation of a business owner. That's why we messed up because it takes a revelation. God needs to reveal this to you for you to know how it's supposed to be. You still got scales on your eyes. You still blind spiritually. That's what your problem is. And as a result, you reject the truth of God's word. And he said, the day you hear my voice. You know what a lot of folks' problem is? They have a problem with the person who the word is coming through. So instead of focusing on the word, you focus on the person. And you reject the truth of the word because it ain't coming in the vessel you think it ought to come in. It ain't that God ain't speaking. It's just that you don't have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church because you caught up in flesh and you caught up in people. God can speak to whoever he want to speak to. Do you know the voice of God? He said that my voice is my word. God, if God speaks the word through your baby, you need to receive it if you're going to get delivered. The reason why you're not delivered because you're saying this is my baby. It ain't made about being your baby. It's what they saying out of their mouth, the truth about you. Now we get to my text. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Go to King James. Hold on. Let's read this, and then I want to read it from the King James. Read. Go ahead. You crazy Stop right there. Because I know when I said some of y'all crazy, y'all got offended. <laughs> he shouldn't be saying that. The Bible just said it. As a matter of fact, we can go deep in that. See, that's why you need to read the Bible. Jesus called some religious people some vipers. He said, you snakes. Um, so Bishop was pre preaching about the first fruit offering. So I sold my seed, and my business has grown drastically. Um, my sales has increased over 622%. I'm making, I'm making more money than any, than any job that I ever had, and it's just been a blessing. My sales is going up every month, like every month. Yeah. You snakes. Why was Jesus so hard? It's religious people is hard to get through to. You crazy Galatians. You crazy Christians. Read. Woo. 
Did somebody hex you? Have you lost your mind? Read. My God. Look, let's go to the King James Version. Look at this. Read. He say, foolish Galatians. Foolish means silly. Sisman. Sis, sisless. Without judgment. When you lose your composure. When you lack good sense. Foolish means unwise. This is Paul talking to the church that he established. He knew they had the truth, but they deviated from it. We don't have to come to church no more. Most people like that got the wrong spirit. Can't tell them nothing. Foolish Galatians. You ready? You ready for my title? Look to the person and say, neighbor, neighbor. who's bewitched you? <laughs> you know what bewitch means? To cast a spell on. Yeah. Who didn't cast a spell on you? Yeah. Who got a hook in your nose? Yeah. Who's controlling you? Yeah. I got news for you. God don't control you. So how you let somebody else control you? Because you're under their spell. Ain't nobody got no business controlling you. Your spouse shouldn't be controlling you. Your kids, you know why? Because God don't control you. He gives you a choice to do right or wrong. You can't make nobody do nothing. Now, you, you need to hold people accountable. You need to give people ultimatums. But you can't control. I can't make you y'all do nothing. Now, if you toxic and acting crazy, I can sit you down. I can correct you. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's what a leader's supposed to do. But I can't make you do nothing. And if you don't want to do it, I'm going to sit you down and get somebody up there that's going to do it. Willingly. But you can't make nobody do nothing. You can't make nobody get saved. You can't make nobody tired. You can't make nobody do nothing. And that's dangerous to do that because now you're diving into witchcraft. You know why y'all quiet? Because a lot of y'all controlling. And, and you ain't got to just say, I'm, do what I say. You get an attitude for two weeks. I'm punishing you for two weeks because I don't like what you did. Okay, witchy poo. I'm not going to speak for three weeks because I'm mad at you. I'm putting a spell on you. I'm not going to forgive you because what you did was wrong. So it's been two years, and you've been under a hex. You can hex yourself. You can cast a spell on yourself. I'm going to show you in a minute. You in a spider web. You can't get out of it. I'm going to show y'all how dangerous rebellion is. Whoo, that spirit is bad. That's a bad. Stubborn and rebellious will cause you to be hexed. And some of y'all been stubborn all your life. Watch this. That's why you got all these problems that persist. Because you're under a curse. You're under a spell. Because of your rebellion and disobedience. You're not rebelling against the person. You're rebelling against the truth. Is that it? Read. Who has cast a spell on you? Watch this. You don't think obeying God is, is, is important? Watch this. Oh, God. Look at the areas of your life where you defeated him. You know why you defeated? Because you're disobedient in those areas. Oh, they talk about tithing. Most folks got financial problems. Don't tithe. Don't give God what belongs to him. They play money games. You tithing ain't got nothing to do with me. And watch this. You can tie and still have financial problems because you don't make good decisions. And your pockets got holes in them. So when you take money and put in, it's like, where did that money go? Because you got holes in your pocket. 
That ain't no curse. What is it? Take marriage for reference. You won't submit in your marriage? Y'all got all type of problems. Because, watch this, disobedience opens up doors to demons, and obedience closes them. So you keep on rebelling and kicking and clowning. I ain't going to submit. I'm going to do them. Okay, that's them demons coming, and they bring their cousins, their aunts, their uncles, and their mama in. That's why y'all can't get along. That's why y'all can't have standing jet. That's why y'all can't get an agreement, because it's some demons that invaded your home. Because you won't do it according to the scripture. Let me think of another area. Your kids. Them little demons in your house. That's out of control. You know why? Because you pass your spirit to them. They got your spirit. They got your demons. She's fast. You was too. She's a whore. You were too. She's a drunk. You was too. You forgot. You didn't forget. We pass demons down to our bloodline. When you in sin and doing everything under the sun and you conceive a child, that sin is in that child. Ain't no sister throwing a fit. Look how they are. You was the same way, fool. Only thing you can do now is intercede for them and believe God to deliver them. Because it's a spirit that's operating in them that came from you. Now you act like you missed Goody Two Shoe now. You a nun now. Am I hitting too hard? Any demons coming out? Jesus, I cast the Jesus, I cast the spirits out with the word. Only thing gonna get demons out of us is the word of God. And if you have a problem with the truth about you, that's why you in bondage. I ain't, we good at the truth about somebody else, but what about the truth about you? Your behavior, your attitude. He didn't tell you to work out somebody else's salvation. He said work out your own. Is that it? Read. I'm going to have to cut across the fence. I'm going to have to cut across the fence. The problem lies in the crimes have been evidently set forth. Okay, let's cut across the fence. Let's cut across the fence. I'm going to read about King Saul. Israel, first king. Let's go to the first verses. I'm going to have to, first Samuel 15. Let's go to verse 1. Read. The prophet said to King Saul, the Lord sent me to put my, his ability on you, king, over the people. And, and you wasn't my choice, you was the people's choice, because we voted you in. Voting? That ain't me in no church. We should be voting. Pray and ask what God said, and that's what we do. Ain't no voting. That's that Baptist mess. That's why the Baptist church so messed up. We vote them. We vote them in, vote them out. Read. Over, over my people. Uh -huh. Now therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the word of the Lord. Stop right there. I'm going to tell you why we so in bondage. Because we don't listen. He said hearken. You know what hearken mean? Pay close attention to what's being said to you. Most of the arguments and the fallouts and the disagreement come because we heard something wrong. Because we not really concerned about what this person is saying to us. Because I can't wait till you be quiet so I can say what I want to say. So you not listening. And we do God the same way. God speaks to us all the time in different ways. But we don't know his voice, so we miss him, and we I'm confused. You confused because God already told you what to do, and you won't do it. Didn't the Bible say God's not the author of confusion? So anytime you're confused, it's because God already told you what to do, and you don't want to do it. 
So why would God keep speaking to you, and he spoke to you two years ago, and you still ain't did what he told you to do two years ago. Why would God keep, God ain't retarded. Why would God keep speaking to you, and he told you to do something two years ago, and you still ain't did it. But God still, see, uh, the Lord said, the Lord said, stop lying on God. God talked to y'all, some of y'all more ain't talked to me. It's some stuff God ain't got to tell me. I know what the scripture says, so I just do it. He ain't got to tell me. I ain't got to feel no goosebumps. He ain't got to send no angel to touch my toe and come in my room at night. No, I already know that if the Bible says forgive your enemies, then I got to forgive. I ain't got to hear God tell me to forgive. I'm going to forgive because if I don't, it's going to mess me up. It ain't going to mess them up. It's going to mess me up. It may take me a couple of days to forgive you. <laughs> it may take me a week. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to eventually get over it because if I don't, it's going to mess my relationship up with God. And a whole bunch of you are watching right now bitter and mad at somebody. It's because they hurt you or whatever they did to you, and you are offended, and, and everybody wrong except you. I hope that you was blessed by that word on today. I really want to really drive the point home of where you spend eternity after you die. I know on Facebook people go and say, you know, they, I know people want to be inspired and they say rest in peace and, and they got their wings today, but it's more to it than that. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you don't go to heaven. You don't just go to heaven just because. No, you have to be born again. You have to commit your life to Christ. You have to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if you're watching me on today and you are not saved, you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, repeat after me, say, Lord, I'm sorry. For all of your sins, all of my sins, all of my wrong ways. Lord, you said, if I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And if you accept the Christ, you really meant that from your heart, you are now born again. Now you need to find a church home. You need to find a pastor to watch for your soul. So this is Apostle Anthony L. Trice. Thank you for watching me on today. God bless you. See you next time. We invite you to become a No More Crumbs global partner. Together we can impact the world accomplishing amazing things for the kingdom of God. By supporting this ministry, it helps clothe, feed, and minister and so much more around the globe, breaking the back of life. As this ministry grows, may your life also produce fruit that will last. As a No More Crumbs global partner, we will lead around the globe creating change because your days of having crumbs are over. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus, located 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. Or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your continued support.